What's up, y'all? Y'all know what time it is. It's story time. Go ahead and sit back, relax, grab your little snacks, and tune in for this tea. Before we get into the story time, I do have promos for Julia, a premium artist and company. So if you're not interested in the um, promo, then check the description because I'm going to put a timestamp. For those of y'all that stay for the promo, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Okay, so y'all already know it's with Julia. I ain't really, let me see. I'm trying not to show the box because it's a little beat up. I don't know what UPS was doing. I was tossing this around. It was, they said. A few of the items that come with your purchase with Julia is a gift bag. Okay, just in case you want to re-gift a jewelry cleaner. Um, Julia did start a rewards program. So essentially, if you spend more, you get more. And it tells you how to take care of your jewelry with a little pamphlet included. That's always nice to have. Oh, y'all, this is so cute. Hold on, look at this. Ain't that cute? Oh, not the ash your hands. Okay, just act like you don't see it. That's too cute. How do you get these made? I want to walk around and pass these out to people. I want me one. So Julia is celebrating their 10th anniversary sale and they wrapped it up real cute, real nice. Julia items usually come in these type of boxes depending on how small or large your item is. The box will vary, okay? These are rings. So let me lotion my little hands and I'm gonna be right back. This is the first ring, a beautiful gold. It's like nice, simple, elegant type of ring. This is the second one. I think it's adorable because you know bows are coming back in style. So I've been seeing bows everywhere, so this is cute. This is the next ring, very beautiful. Then they also sent me this necklace, which it looks like it's a mermaid and the face of the mermaid is a diamond, which is real cute. I've never seen nothing like this before. Um, I am usually a gold girly, so silver would definitely be me stepping out of my comfort zone, which I'm about to try to start doing more. So yeah, I actually really like this necklace. I like the fact that the face of the mermaid is a diamond. That's so cute. Like I was telling you guys, it's Julia's 10th anniversary. So they are having a sale. I will have an extra promo code in the description for you. If you like any of the options that I showed you, I'll have that link in the description. Or if you just want to check out the website and find you something else because they have a lot of cute options. So definitely check them out. They will be in the description. <laughs> Before we get into this one, I just want to say this was not a crash out, but um, I do have a recent, I'm so scared to tell y'all that. Y'all going to be like, oh, you are one of the dumbest, slowest beep in the world. You talk all this beep. and then you went back. Oh, you're stupid. Oh, you stupid, stupid. I've been holding on to this for so long. It's not this story time. I'm so sorry. I'm hyping y'all up. Y'all probably happy y'all up. Y'all like, oh, we finna get the tea. Not yet, bitch. Not yet. Because I got to build you up to the tea. I don't even know where to start this video off at. But at this point, it's like two weeks after my baby shower debacle, right? And if you haven't seen that, I'm going to link that in the description so you can catch up on that. So it's two weeks after that. I'm past 40 weeks. I should have been gave birth. I remember having um a... <sighs> A doctor's appointment to get induced because they just knew i was gonna go over the 40 weeks we driving back and forth from the small um, town that we lived in back to houston because i knew i didn't want to have my baby in that small town that was never gonna happen and living there was never gonna be a permanent thing anyway and then mm -mm, it was like a small little racist town like no i also remember the doctor telling me to like not drive long distances and we had to drive two hours like all the time to get back to houston so basically the doctor told me to sit down because the baby can come at any time now you want to be close to a hospital no matter where you are so me and my ex dry we packing bags up to go back to houston to his mama house because we it wasn't no coming back until after i had the baby right so i remember that we pack our bags up get on the road and stuff like the video leave anything in the comments and make sure you also start taking me notified for when you go post all right <sighs> Houston roads are already crazy. So imagine when you hit them outskirts and them small towns, okay, where it's nothing for miles and miles. It's two, it's ditches on each side, winding roads like this. I'm nine months pregnant and you want to speed. So he's speeding. I'm, I'm anxious. I'm getting anxiety. I'm holding that little lever, just holding on tight because, like, y'all really felt like I could never react to nothing because he would always just. Mm, calm you dramatic man why you being why you doing all that you doing all that so i'm just like okay whatever he got it because mind you we done did this before so many times he must have curved the car too much couldn't jerk it back in time bitch next thing i know we sliding into a ditch and when i mean sliding i mean car going crazy i'm going crazy and he just every time mind you we had just slid in the ditch like a few months earlier because it was so cold and it was black ice on the road. We couldn't see it. He speeding once again and we slide into damn near the same ditch. Had to get somebody to help us out. I'm scared for my life, my baby life. Like, 
your life because you don't even care about your life. I just was throwing, I just got off the car and started throwing up. I couldn't even be mad. I was gonna say, I think we drove out the ditch, but I think somebody actually ended up helping us out the ditch. One thing about it, Houston is good for a ditch, bitch. Fast forward a little bit, it's like a Saturday now. I'm scheduled to get induced for that Monday. I could not wait. I'm swallowing castor oil. I'm dancing. I'm walking outside for hours at a time. I couldn't take it no more. So I'm talking about literally hours at a time. Two hours walking, then I take a break. Then I walk two more hours, and then I take a small break. So I'm just walking outside. I'm literally walking in a circle going crazy. And um, as I'm walking, I see Dorothea car pull up, which Dorothea is Dre mama friend, his play auntie. So I'm like, okay, let me go on the front door instead of going in the back door. I think about 30 minutes go by, he come in like, oh, you sitting down, I knew you weren't gonna walk all day. He say something like that. So I'm like, okay, let me get up because everything I do, he all, especially around this time, he always wanted to make it seem like I was lazy. I remember I'm about to go back outside. He like, oh, my mama wanna ask you something. Like, I think she wanted to ask me which hospital I was giving birth at and stuff like that so they could just know. I'm walking towards his mama room and he was like, nah, she outside, like the back door outside. And I'm like, who all out there? Because his mama never sit outside. It had to be some extra people out there. So I'm like, who all out there? And he started naming that. I'm talking about this nigga talking about Lil John John out there, Megatron out there, Devonte out there, Lamonte out there. I'm like, is Dorothea out there? Previously. Tell y'all name the lady Dorothea. If you know, you not. Mind you the lady like 43, 44, right? She all she the one that always approached me like, hey bitch, hey ho. It was this unspoken thing because he knew that his little play auntie didn't like me and he knew I was tired of her disrespecting me but he would never say nothing on my behalf and he knew that I didn't ever like want to speak up because it ain't no in between for me especially when it's that type of animosity with somebody it's no in between I can't keep it cool it'll go from zero to 100 real quick and then I would be the problem his his family loved painting me as the problem ever since um I went next door to check his neighbor that he cheated on me with when I knocked on her door Oh, they was like, this hoe gotta go. She causes too much drama. So I'm like, I'm, you know I'm not gonna say nothing to this lady. Like, why can't you say nothing to her? It's not that serious, not that deep. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing. I'm like, every time I see her, she call me a bitch in the hoe when we speak. What you mean it's not that deep? I just end up telling him, like, I'm tired of y'all play auntie talking to me like that. Nobody check her ass. It's been three years. I'm on a, oh, I was on the verge of tears. I'm telling you, when I was pregnant, anything would have made me cry. So I'm like, it's been three years, three years, like tears about to come out my eyes. And he was like, you check her ass, you say something then. Like grab your nuts, you grown, and tell her this, that, and tell her don't play with you like that. You gotta tell her, you gotta check motherfuckers like that. And I'm like, I'm asking you to do it. <laughs> like I'm asking you to do it for a reason. So he was like, you check her, you say, you tell her if she, if she come at you like that. Yeah, that's what he said. If she call you out your name, then you say something to her. She make you feel away. Then I'm gonna check her too. So I was like, oh, not you got my back. So I'm like, oh, okay. This like the second time that he made me feel like he didn't play about me. And I really love that feeling. I've been, I have been searching for that feeling since the first time he let me know he didn't play about me. Then all of a sudden that nigga started playing about me. And he played by me for like four years after that. And now we here, well, three years, and now we here, and he making me feel that way again. So I'm like, oh, okay, he let me. He let me, that's my man. <laughs> Stupid. So we go outside. I'm like, yeah, I want this bitch to say something. This is the only time I ever wanted her to say something. And mama say something, and she was like, what hospital are you supposed to da 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 So I tell her the hospital. Here go Dorothea. Dorothea just standing there, leaning on the car. I'm like, yeah, say it, say it. Right after um the mama asked me, Dorothea's like, hey, mama to be. Pardon me. <laughs> what who and low-key when i knew the mama was out there when i knew dre mama was out there i knew she wasn't finna do it i stood there for a little minute and that's time for her to go to her car or wherever she had or was it in a trunk i don't know she went and got something and gave it to me and it was for the baby when i tell you i put that shit in the corner at dre mama house and never touched it looked at it thought about it again bitch i don't play with you i came in like 12 a.m from walking all day I end up falling asleep on the couch and I want to say around like 3 a.m. I woke up and my stomach was, it was doing something that I never felt before, but I'm like, oh, this is false Braxton Hicks because I want to say they said it could be off about a week or two. So even though you, even though we're telling you, you passed 40, you could still be like 38 weeks right now. So it's not likely for you to go into labor, but you clear to be induced. You know if that's what you really want so i was like induce me that's why i was thinking the pains that i was having was braxton hicks because i had had them a lot i go back to sleep 
I woke up again. I'm talking about it's literally four o'clock. So I'm like, an hour later? Okay, same pain, whatever. Wake up again. It's 5 a.m. So at this point, I'm starting to wake up every hour on the hour because of this pain. So I would get up, throw up, go back to sleep. I think I fully woke up at like around six o'clock that morning. Y'all, I will never forget this. The pain was like something different and I'm real good with pain. So when the pain started getting worse and worse, I gave it like an hour and then I'm like, no, nah, I need to call the doctor. I remember going outside, calling the doctor cause I'm like, am I dragging it? Am I being dramatic? I still, I need to call the doctor cause I'm bent over. I can't even stand up and walk straight. So I'm on the phone with the doctor, literally mid conversation, throwing up outside while talking to her on the phone. So she was like, um, how's the pain? What is it like? Da, da, da. She was like, okay, it's probably Braxton Hicks. Um, give it an hour and then call back if it gets worse. I'm looking at the phone like, huh, bitch? Do you know I can't breathe? I'm about to fall out. When this pain come, I can't even breathe. I don't, my body don't know what to do. So I just stopped breathing. It wasn't funny, like it was very bad. So I'm like, okay. So I'm walking around the house looking for my ex Dre because I'm like, I need to go to the hospital. I can't find him nowhere. I'm up in the bathroom having a contraction while throwing up. So I'm choking on my throw up. I'm just like head on the sink. Couldn't even sit down, head on sink. Just like couldn't breathe. It was a mess. At the same time, I start hearing his voice all open the door and I noticed his voice coming from his mama room, which was literally right down the hall. I try to fix myself up and look like normal, look like I wasn't just finna die. So I go up in there and I'm like, um, I'm like, Dre, I think I need to go to the hospital. The mama was like, he like, huh? The mama was like, you having contractions? And I was like, yeah, I'm in pain and I can't take it no more. The whole time I'm hunched over. He just laying there. His mama had to tell him, Dre, get up. She's having contractions. I'm thinking he finna put the pedal to the motherfucking metal. Like, I think, I'm thinking it's finna be like a scene in the movies where he just zooming like through traffic. Like, she's pregnant. She's about to have my baby. I gotta get her to the hospital, bitch. No, no. When I say he started going under the speed limit, he done went faster for a two piece in the biscuit for Popeye's house. I know he not going under the speed limit. It's fine if you hate me, just say that. At this point, it's like 9, 10 a.m. on a Sunday. Ain't no traffic, everybody in church. I don't know how or why he was going this slow. I don't know how he was missing turns, taking wrong turns. Maybe he was nervous. I'm giving him a benefit of the doubt. Like, okay, he, he panicking on the inside. Like, he a person that panic on the inside and like try to keep it cool. We finally get to the hospital. We walk in, I'm telling the lady at the front desk, like, yeah, I think I'm having contractions they this far apart or like every few minutes is i feel like this whatever so she was like okay y'all gonna have to take the elevator up to the labor and delivery wing of the hospital and she was like she asked me if i needed a, a wheelchair so me i'm like nah i don't need a wheelchair i can walk she was like no ma'am i think you need a wheelchair you should take this wheelchair so i'm like no i can walk so i start walking to the elevator start having contractions right then and there so i'm hunched over and i'm having a contraction my ex is like dre is like just sit in a wheelchair. In the moment, I was so embarrassed. So we end up going up there to the um to that floor. He wheeling me around. We go up to that front desk and they give me like a stack of papers to fill out. How am I supposed to do this while I'm having contractions? Finally, I get a room. They give me a gown to change in and everything like that. A nurse came in and um she was like, we're gonna check to see how dilated you are. So this is another reason why I, I was just ready because towards the end it's like every hospital visit everybody is putting their five fingers inside of me i was so tired that's the most uncomfortable thing like mm -mm. so she checks she puts the glove on go inside check she was like looking at me all funny and stuff she was like huh how, how's your contractions how far apart you said your contractions are you sure you only a half a centimeter dilated i was like okay so what does that mean because if this is a half a centimeter I don't even want to know what nine, ten centimeters feel like. So she was like, yeah, you only half a centimeter, um, centimeter dilated. So I'm gonna have to send you home. I was like, no, no, please. The pain that I was in, it just didn't feel right. So I'm like, please, like, I, I don't want to go home just to come all the way up here. She was like, well, you occupying a room that could be for somebody else that's actually in labor or something like that. And I was like, <sighs> so she was like, okay, you could wait here for an hour. If you're not more dilated within the hour, then we send you back home because you got your, it looks like you scheduled to be induced on Monday anyway. I'm not going to lie. And I would hate to bring race into it, but a lot of the times it be your own people. And it was just like from her tone to her demeanor, to her attitude, it was just like, yeah, you'll be all right. Like you probably being dramatic anyway. You know, the same feeling that I've been feeling damn near my whole life. You know what I'm saying? That's why we don't like to go to the, a lot of us. We don't like to go to the hospital because we get dismissed a lot. 
And I was just like, I was having that feeling because I know the kind of pain that I'm in, regardless of what you're saying, I know the pain that I'm in. So I'm telling my ex, like, I don't understand. I'm in so much pain. He he barely gave a fuck. I think I started even texting my aunts. I, I cannot remember what I said. So um, another nurse comes in. I think, I want to say she offered me ice chips or something. And she was like, um, okay, well, how far are your contractions? How far apart are your contractions now? Da, da, da. Because I think she heard me like yelling and stuff because my I was in so much pain that I started yelling. Like, I'm not finna hold this in. I'm not finna hold this in. If I need to shit, fuck, I'ma do it. I don't care if nobody else doing it, I'ma do it. It was a different nurse. That nurse, the one that was asking me about my contractions, she came in and she was like, oh, first time mama. And he was, and I was like, yeah. And he was like, yeah, you know, I, I'm trying to tell her to keep it down. Sorry about that. Like, huh? So it's like, she didn't even give all that. So when he said something like that, she was like, yeah, no, reach out for his hand so he can like feel what you going through. So she telling me, squeeze his hand, squeeze it as hard as you can so he can feel it. So I'm like, oh, trust me, I will. It was the fact that he was acting so embarrassed that really irritated me. Cause he was like, nobody else doing that, da, da, da. But you do hear other people screaming, like screaming they ass off. And I promise you, I wasn't even super duper loud. Cause I still like, come on now. At this point, the contractions are getting closer and closer. The pain, very much unbearable. I reach out for his hand to squeeze it because when the contractions was, would come and now at the pain rate that they are, I would try to hold my breath through it because it hurt less. So I'm trying to reach out for his hand. He was like, man, just, so yeah, I'm having the contractions and I'm squeezing his hand and he gonna tell me, man, just chill. You need to calm down. Just calm down. It's not that serious. <laughs> I'm, I'm breathing hard. I'm like, well, what do you mean? It's not that serious. What do you mean? You don't know how much pain I'm in. He said something to the effect of, I know it might hurt, but you ain't gotta be screaming and cussing like that. I wanted to cry so bad, but I'm like, no, nah, I'm not gonna give him the satisfaction of like him seeing, knowing that he hurt my feelings again. Because at one point I just vowed to myself, like this man will never see me shed another tear. I don't care how small or how big the situation is. You'll never see me cry again. I'm just like, I can't believe you just said that. I can't believe you said that. Like, are you serious? And he was like, man, you know what I mean? You know, it, it's, it's not that serious, like, for you to be doing all that. And I'm like, I cannot. Be, I'm like, what? Like, you said it again? Like, it, it was just unbelievable. At this point, the hour is up. And the, um, the nurse, the first nurse that came in, she come back in and she checked me. She looking crazy. She like, okay, how far apart your contractions now? She, she looking all worried. I'm like, what's going on? Like, I'm like, is something wrong? Because, you know, they usually don't tell you. They'll just like... They'll do everything but tell you if something is wrong. I guess because they don't want to upset you and have you panicking. She take the glove off, hurry up around the room, come back in the room with the doctor. He checked me. He was like, asking me the same questions. Okay, what's the pain level? I'm like, out of what? 10, 40. So he was like, how far are your contractions? Um, I'm like, they every, like, I don't even know, every other breath damn near. So he was like, oh, we got to get you prepped for um delivery because you eight centimeters dilated. I was like, how did I go from half a centimeter to eight centimeters dilated? So I'm like eight centimeters. I'm looking all confused. Like no wonder, no wonder. Because whole time my ex is thinking I'm nothing but half a centimeter dilated. And um, so I guess he didn't know why I was like in so much pain. I feel like, I don't know. I could tell by the look on a nurse's face, the first nurse, that she she had fucked up or something because she started apologizing like i am so sorry like i i must have missed I, whatever must have misjudged it or something so the doctor was like yeah she's eight centimeters dilated do you want an epidural da, da, da. so i'm like at that time i didn't know like i feel like everything was so rushed like they didn't give me enough time to process what was going on and think so he was like i'm gonna have to um break your water so i'm like when he was like now i'm like right here in the bed he put five fingers back up and he like do this hard push, like a few pushes. And the best way I could describe it is like a, a balloon popping inside of you. Like it, I could hear the sound and everything. I was like, it didn't hurt or nothing, but it was like a pressure and then a pop. So all the fluids start just coming out. They give me a new gown. I don't know why they did it like that. I guess they had to. They give me a new they give me a new gown. I went to the restroom. I had to pee anyway. So I ended up after I did all that, I took all the wet stuff off. I'm barefoot. Everything just was so I felt so nasty. I took that little shower thing because they had a shower thing up in there, a shower head. I rinsed off. I put the new gown on. And um they rolled in a different bed and I, they rolled me into another room so I could get prepped for labor or delivery now i'm in a new room and my mouth was so dry i'm like can i chew some gum if i can't have it they was like no you can only eat on ice chips i didn't want that 
so um i'm starting to feel sick so i they give me this bag to throw up and so now i'm throwing up and having contractions they asking me um how much pain i'm in like do i want to go all the way or do i want the epidural epidural me now please so i told them i want the epidural now i'm on the way to being like nine centimeters dilated i really could have went all the way but i just couldn't i could have but i couldn't so um that one nurse come back in the one that didn't give a fuck at first and i noticed her whole like tone and demeanor change she was like oh before before i answered the question about the epidural she was like you don't have to be strong if you're if you're in too much pain then just take the epidural it'll really help you it'll calm you down you might stop throwing up and da 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 so i'm like okay yeah epidural me because i can't do this the doctor come in for the epidural she helping me get up she rubbing my back whispering in my ear like you're strong you're gonna have a beautiful baby girl you're doing great you're amazing da 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 rubbing my back she was like i just need you to be still because this is the this is the part where you got to be real strong like <laughs> talking to me like i was five damn near i'm like oh you just hated me like an hour ago but it's cool but in the moment i'm telling you in the moment i'm like she is an angel she's the nicest person i ever met because i felt like every the other staff and everybody else was just being so like i know i guess i know they see this all the time and every day but as a first time mine is my first time experience so i feel like you should treat people as this is your first time you know going through this too because it's my first time i don't know is that too much to ask because, like, when you do something you love, that's how it's going to come off. Like, you're not going to get irritated and just be like, whatever, nonchalant about certain things. You know what I'm saying? She was saying, like, if I moved, take a deep breath. And if I move, she like, was basically saying, if I moved, I could have, like, permanent nerve damage. And then here go the doctor. This is the needle. Finish show me this long ass needle. I didn't need to see it, sir. So I just, um, when you get an epidural, you really you feel the initial poke but after that like you don't really feel nothing else it's not as bad as people make it seem you do feel it though so i'm telling you i waited for so long and i think they ended up saying like the um my doctor the one that i was talking to and who was asking me all the questions about what i wanted and this and the third something happened i think she was on call or delivering another baby at the time so she couldn't come for me so they had to call in a different doctor for me like randomly so i was like that's what we was waiting on we was waiting for the doctor to get there so um during that like my aunts came they bought me a teddy bear flowers and all this stuff um dre mama and her man came and it was just like it was cool it was it was nice it was calm finally the doctor come in mind you i ain't never seen this doctor talk to her nothing she come in your mom all right let's get this going i'm like well hi hello how are you <laughs> she get down there no warm-ups no nothing and i'm like i did wait for so long and i was growing impatient so when she finally came i did expect to be warmed up at least say tell me something like i don't know what i'm doing so she just get down there um put my legs in the stirrups and she just started telling me to push so my first push she was like you gotta have you gonna have to push harder than that mom you gotta push 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 so i push again she was like no this isn't cutting it she said something like i'm like not cutting it what am i doing wrong because i'm pushing with all my might i can feel the veins popping out of my neck so she was like you need to push you need to push then on top of that i can hear a drag over to my left talking about you gotta push you gotta push boy shut up shit so I push again. I guess my push, I wasn't pushing good enough or hard enough. Cause, and I'm like, uh, why is she like rushing this process? Everything just felt so rushed. But come to find out, like my daughter umbilical cord was about, oh, first of all, she was butt first. So I heard them throwing around, oh, she's going to need an emergency C-section. I don't know what happened. I don't know if she reached up there because mind you, I could barely feel it. I just felt a bunch of pressure, but I knew she was doing something down there. So um, I don't know if she turned her around. I don't know what happened. But then second, come to find out then her umbilical cord was about to be wrapped around her neck. That's why it was like such a rush to push, push, push. Somebody had bought her like that little tool, that little suction thing where you just take it and then like suck the baby out. If y'all know what that's called, let me know. But all I know is next thing I'm trying to push, I'm still trying to push. And then I feel like this huge release. It was like a release and a relief because I felt her come out. Fast forward after the delivery, I need the stitches because I had ripped all the way to my butt so after they do all that i get sweet i move rooms right so and then they kept her because she needed to go in the incubator so she could like get to temperature they moving all my stuff into the new room still my phone going up i look at it it's my friend dum dum which dum dum is dre brother baby mama so she asking me if i had the baby and she asking me some other stuff like send me a picture da 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 this whatever how oh how she looked whatever so i'm just looking at it and mind you i only gave birth probably like i had only given birth like an hour ago at this point maybe a little over an hour it's a lot going on it's a lot of chaos so i'm not um messaging her back so my phone just still going off. I'm over here talking to Dre. I'm talking, um, I'm talking to my aunts. I'm talking to staff. I'm talking to the nurses, everybody. 
so the last thing on my mind is sending her a picture when I don't even have the baby. The baby is in the incubator, so it shows she can warm up, right? When I ended up texting her back, it probably was like 20 minutes later, and I text her like, um, the baby is like in the incubator warming up, whatever. I'm just explaining it to her. So she was like, okay, send me the picture when the baby in the room with you. So like maybe 30 minutes go by. She was like, hello? You gonna send a picture? I would have been sent the picture. If you don't want to send a picture, that's all you had to say. I don't know why she wanted a picture so bad, but I haven't sent the picture to nobody else. None of my people got a, a picture like, what make you think you that special so she was just like um she was trying to act like i was acting weird for not sending the picture then she ended up calling me so she was like girl why are you not sending the picture my mama want to see the baby and da da da, da. Um, i don't even girl if y'all know our past then you know it's history there like we it's not even that when we was on the phone they was rolling her in so she was like oh take the picture now take the picture now and send it so that's what i did when i finally sent the picture all she said was oh okay it was more of a oh okay and in that moment, I realized like I shouldn't have sent her no picture. Cause what do you need this picture for? I just I don't know why I just felt so uneasy about it. Like why did I send her a picture? I ended up getting off the phone with her. So at this point, me and Dre, like we looking at the baby, talking, this, then the third. And she in a room with us for like 20 minutes at the most. Probably not even that. I'm not even gonna hold you. At one point, he just hop up. He was sitting on the couch, we was talking. He just hop up. He was like, All right, I'm about to go. I was like, go, what you talking about? Like, where are you about to go? He was like, I gotta go serve somebody. Somebody been waiting on me and I need to go get some stuff from the house. But he was talking about our house, the house that we live in, in that small college town that was two hours away. So I'm like, what you gotta go get? We packed up everything so we wouldn't have to keep going back and forth. So why are you finna drive all the way there? And mind you, at this point, it's kind of late. It's not super late, but I knew like, they stopped letting people in at a certain time. So I'm like, he was like, I'll be back. And then he was like, um, I was like, they not gonna let people in after a certain time. And he was like, well, I'll come back in the morning. Like, I ain't gonna sleep on this hard ass couch, no way. I was like, you you really finna leave me in a hospital by myself? You really finna leave me? He was like, the nurses is here. You want me to tell my mama to come up here? I'll tell my mama to come back up here, da da da. I was like, did your mama get me pregnant? Is this your mama baby? I got tears literally about to roll down my face. I'm like, you do not have to leave. You can wait a few days. I just gave birth, da da da. He was like, exactly, you just gave birth. I need to grind harder than ever, Tatiana. This is the time, like, I need to grind harder now. I'm like, I cannot believe you about to leave me in the hospital by myself, like, voice cracking and all. He was like, man, people been waiting on me all day. I'm hungry in the game, Hey, da 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 da. So I'm like, sorry for inconveniencing your day. Like, I wasn't doing nothing but giving birth to your child. So he was like, oh, here you go, here you go. I'm like, you always doing shit like this. Like you so inconsiderate, this, that, and the third. So he was like, all right, damn, damn. Fast forward, y'all know the nurses and stuff come in at least like every 30 minutes. So now it's like around 6 a.m. They done came, I, I haven't slept at all. They done came in like every 30 minutes to check me, do this, do that. Like so much was going on. And I was just like, I was kind of getting irritated because I kind of, I wanted to be left alone. I was in pain. Um, I got stitches like you know I was just very very uncomfortable so um around 6 a.m the lady come in and she was like um she asked me something they checking me she was like oh, okay so um do you want to be released today like did you want to go home or something like that and I was like um somebody was supposed to come in and like talk to me about breastfeeding and show me how to do it and da 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 she was like oh okay so the lady come in very briefly I'm talking about under five minutes tell me she tell me how to do it and then she gave me a pamphlet and told me to read the pamphlet. I was like, oh, that's it? So when I tried to do it, not Nyla bit me, cracked my thing, and I started bleeding. So I had to use a shield, and that was so painful because, like, you know, it, it take a minute to heal. So they ended up giving her stimuli. I'm like, oh, I'm a failure. I'm just sitting there depressed because I can't feed my baby with my chest. Dry ass on the couch, knocked out just snoring fast forward to like 9 a.m they come in again did you want to be released today did you want to go home today da, 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 da. so i'm like i i don't know like i don't know fast forward again to like noon it's like 12 at this point they asking me if i want to be released i'm like okay because y'all asking me if i wanted to be i don't know i just got an attitude out of nowhere i feel like i was still hormonal or something because i just started going off i'm like you keep coming in here asking me if i wanted to be released yeah you can release me today i'll go home y'all trying to kick me out i'll go home like i was so mad i think i was so frustrated because dre like he pulled that stunt and then like dumb dumb over here acting weird i was just overwhelmed by everything that kept messing with me so i don't know i just blew up i'm like yeah 
yeah i'll be released today the fuck girl i started getting up i thought i don't know why i thought i could get up and walk <laughs> when i got up and i tried to walk bitch oh no no no, no. because I, I tried to take a shower there the first night i don't know why i thought i could do that i was in so much pain i could not walk oh no I'm stitches was killing me so um whatever i leave that day y'all it was so much that happened my ex was just getting on my nerves like every little thing he was doing was getting on my nerves i had to be wheeled out and he went to go get the car i'm like i could just be wheeled to the car he want to pull up to the front then um i had dropped my bear so i'm like oh shit where's my bear he ran over my bear yeah i can't stop laughing at this part because i had dropped my bear and my aunt gave me with nyla name and all her birth information on it so he looked in the rear view seen it outside and actively ran over the bear after he seen it then he tried to act like it was an accident <laughs> <laughs> it's funny now but at the time i wanted to strangle him like i was just so annoyed then we get in a car and he blasting the music i'm talking about man i'm talking about he blasting the music to the point where you could feel it in your chest and my baby in the back just wincing like you could tell she was uncomfortable so i'm yelling at him to turn the music down we're going back and forth then he's speeding and swerving off i'm like drive like there's a fucking baby in a car we end up going to his mom's house she had like made up his little sister room and the little sister was gonna sleep with the mama so i could be in the room with the baby and she put a rocket chair up in there because i couldn't even lay down like them stitches was whooping me i couldn't lay down so her bassinet and stuff was in that room and then he slept in the bed i slept in the chair and the baby slept in the bassinet it's like the second day and i'm trying to like do everything by myself miss independent i don't know why i was trying to be so independent knowing i got stitches so i'm trying to feed the baby change the diaper da, 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 da. i was trying to feed her i was trying to feed my baby and i accidentally dropped the bottle and i was trying to bend down to pick up the bottle i bent down popped the stitch i felt blood gushing out and so i was in so much pain to the point where i couldn't walk i had to like scoop my feet on the carpet like to walk so i called the hospital i'm like i'm in so much pain like i popped the stitch this that, and the third i told them what happened that was like um because they gave me medicine but it was like tylenol threes which is just a strong tylenol what is that gonna do i literally have stitches so they was like um we can't give you nothing stronger but if you come and like you come get checked out and we can like assess the situation to see if you can get something stronger right so my ex is like um tell them before before i got on the phone he was like tell him you were so much pain like so you could get something stronger because we could sell that we could sell them pills like you know how much they pay for that you know how much they pay for pills and here go his brother Devonte. yeah hell yeah hell yeah and i could cut you in i could give you half or something huh <laughs> first of all he said it like he was doing me a favor like yeah i could cut you in give me your pills i'll sell them and i could give you a little off the top give you a little something i <laughs> I was just like, what? I need, I was like, I'm in pain. I'm in actual pain. Like, I need these pills. He was like, man, just tell him, just tell him and get, get a few refills and then you could get the refill and you know, get, I need them scripts go crazy on the street. They go crazy. Like, you'll get a lot for him. So I'm like, oh, y'all get him. Y'all get, I'm thinking, and I'm telling you in my head, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, all right, sure, whatever. In my head, I was like, um, I'm not doing that. I'm just like say, like telling them to shoo shoo so they can get out of my face, right? So I called a doctor and they was like, yeah, you could come back up here and do this, that, and the third, and we can see if we could give you something stronger. And in my head, I'm like, I don't even wanna go through that hassle because when I come back with a stronger prescription, I know how Dre brother is. I know how he is. He gonna hassle me down and like, man, just give me the pills. Like, man, come on, man, we already had a deal. Give me them pills. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he is that type of person. Like, he if he don't get his way, ain't even know if he gonna get his way like you know i don't know i ain't feel like dealing with that so i'm like no you know what i'm gonna just have to eat this pain it's crazy that i'd rather eat the pain than deal with him so i ended up lying and telling him that the doctor was like no he can't give me nothing stronger than telling all threes so y'all all, all of this happened in the same day so it's like the next day right <sighs> tell me why i get a call from dum dum and she like um what you doing have the baby whatever um and then she was like you know metro which is dre's side chick she was like you know metro had the ba her baby today too i was like what she was like yeah you know y'all had y'all baby on the same day i'm like what first of all like so much was going on 
that I didn't even care about her. I don't even know why you calling and telling me this. Like, can I just bask in motherhood right quick? I promise you, I wouldn't have even thought nothing like, oh, you think that's Dre, baby? You sure that's not Dre, baby? That could be Dre, baby. Like, I wouldn't have thought none of that if she wasn't just saying little slick stuff like that. Because your, your man, Devontae, is still cool with Metro. So if you say slick stuff like that, I'm going to think that you getting this information from him and he getting it straight from a source. Cause she was like, after you went in labor, I seen on her Snapchat that she went in labor and I was gonna tell you when you was at the hospital, but I wanted to like give you some time to, you know, rest up and I mean like, I don't know, recuperate, whatever she said. I was like, okay. Even if she did have her baby the same day as me, like what is you telling me gonna change? I can't change it. It's like, why does that matter? I felt like she got some kind of sick thrill out of like, us being in competition, like trying to put us in competition. She was like, she didn't post the baby yet, but I'ma send it to you or I'ma show you something, something, something. She said something like that or I'ma come over because like, you know, Snapchat is a snitch. So if she would have screenshotted it, it would have it would have showed Metro and Metro probably would have took her off. And she wanted to still keep up with Metro because she wanted to see if Devante was still messing with Metro homegirl. It was a lot. I know. I'm sorry if this confused it. It was a lot going on. It was very, it was very much chaotic around this time. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, the universe is so funny. The universe is so funny. Because she was telling me, like, yeah, you know, Metro due date was, like, at the end of the month. And it's just so crazy that y'all had y'all baby on the same day. And da 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 I'm like, so now I'm Twitter stalking Metro, like, what what's the odds you know what i'm saying the irritation was building up inside of me because i'm like i don't know why i was getting so so irritated i was getting so angry so i'm like girl i'm gonna call you back i gotta go change my diaper because <laughs> that sounds crazy as hell i forgot to tell y'all i was wearing diapers i had to wear diapers um yeah i'm like i gotta go change my diaper girl because i was really bleeding heavily so really i wanted to argue but i'm like i'm gonna call you back so, um, yeah, his sister has stayed up in the room with our daughter and I'm like scooting around the house trying to find where he at just to start some shit, right? So I scoot up in the living room and he on the couch and um, I'm waiting for his brother Devontae to like go on about his business. So I'm like, I'm about to sit right here and make it awkward as hell um, until he leave. Finally, he got the hint. And I'm like, um, no, 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 I'm just standing. I'm just standing on the side of the couch, on the side of the other couch. And I'm just staring at him and he on his phone trying not to look at me. So I'm like, he like, man, what, bruh? I'm like, yo, bitch had y'all baby. And he was like, what? I'm like, yo, bitch had her baby. And he was like, why the fuck would I care? Like, why, why are you telling me? I don't care. Da, 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 da. Just putting the emphasis on everything. I'm like, because that's your baby. Yo, bitch had your baby and he was like the way he was moving all slow i'm not even trying to put his business out there but i could tell like he was on something not hard drugs i don't want y'all to think this man was a druggie damn because if i'd be like oh he was on some y'all crazy y'all go crazy like y'all will jump to the hard shit crazy so <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, he like, man, I don't give a fuck right now. I don't care. I don't care nothing about that bitch. I don't talk to her, da, 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 da. I'm like, you're lying. You always in your old neighborhood. Like, that leads me to believe that you still fucking with her. Like, I pray. And it's crazy because I prayed so hard when I found out he was cheating on me. I'm like, can something just go in my favor? Like, please, can they get out of this house? And then, like, not even a month later, they lose their house. Girl, I don't know what I was talking about. They lost their house like a cool three to four months after. But my point is they lost their house. So I pull up her Twitter and I'm just like reading him her tweets and I'm like, who is she talking about if it's not about you? Who is she talking about if it's not about you? So he was like, man, how the fuck am I supposed to be talking about probably the nigga that um, got her pregnant? Da -da -da. I'm like, yeah, you. Like very much cuckoo, very much delulu. But it wasn't for no reason. I had somebody like in my ear, you know what I'm saying? To him, like knowing what I know now, he probably think I was actually psychotic, but the fact that I had a so-called friend in my ear doing all this extra shit was crazy. So now I'm Twitter stalking Metro to see when the exact day she had her baby was. And she ended up having hers like damn near the same day. I feel like she had hers on the 20th. No, I'm, I'm almost sure she had hers on the 20th. It, it was just like a lot going on. And I feel like when I first started doing story times about Dum Dum, this is a part of the reason I went so hard. It's like you was being weird times a thousand for no reason at all. A lot of people was asking, was it his baby? No, it wasn't his baby. For the longest, I did think it was. But as the baby started getting older and older, I was like, oh, no, that's not his baby. 
they don't look nothing like my baby with that being said though there is there is the baby there is a baby it just wasn't that baby and i'm gonna tell y'all that story time too because i just found out some new information about the situation so yeah life just keep on life and, and i'm tired okay i'm with that being said this is all for that one all right so like the video on your way i'll leave anything in the comments and make sure you are subscribed so you'll be notified when i post all right because yeah I'm, I'm about to start getting into a little bit more recent things who's <laughs> y'all already know the vibes i love y'all thank you so much for tuning in i'm gonna see you in the next one bye so then tell me why that we could, them scripts go crazy like we could sell them i give you a little something off the top i was like oh oh that's what this is okay can we go home i want to go home now don't do that i crashed out one last time a few years ago <coughs> that's another story for another time i just want y'all to be prepared for it because it will be coming up mm. can i chill you know how this whole make me feel so can you please deal with it let me stop rhyming i'm sorry and i mm -mm. if somebody that i know don't like me i'm not accepting nothing from you nike not a gift a drink nothing money nothing i don't know what you did to this shit i'm sorry i'm superstitious ho y'all know a fun fact um i was so sick during my pregnancy right i would watch asmr videos hard heavy i'm talking about all day be and, and like suck on ice cubes or like eat a, a, a orange or a tangerine or something because everything that i ate that wasn't like small amounts or fruit or something i threw up so i would watch asmr videos tell me why my baby is addicted to asmr videos she was really hearing that she was really hearing that and that's so wild to me i don't even watch it no more <laughs> i can eat now she still watches it and she like thoroughly enjoys it i feel like maybe it's comforting to her that's crazy like they really can hear that ain't that crazy that's, that's just so cute to me. I don't know. And then before that, I told my ex, you need to record everything. Don't you miss a fucking thing. Um, Dre cut the umbilical cord. And it's crazy because I wanted her to stay attached to her umbilical cord, but everything was happening so fast. I wanted to keep my placenta. I felt her um pull my placenta out. That was another release. Then I just felt like, oh, my body is mine again. Like, I felt so light. I felt like I could just float away before they cleaned her off and stuff they let me hold her and i noticed immediately she had a cone head from being sucked out i was like what's wrong with her head is that gonna go away da, da, da. i was i almost panicked asked for after the delivery like i needed stitches god what the hell <laughs> oh yeah my ex was recording everything i really wish i could show y'all the video um but yeah it was it was okay it was cool she was like what the fuck did she say i forgot shit 